What was the reason behind the supersized episodes? Does Stranger Things 4 and its very long episodes mean that the Duffer Brothers have very good timing? In the industry, these mega-sized episodes have become more common, but they must have an explanation, right? Join us to see what we've got for you. The first volume of Stranger Things Season 4, featuring the first seven episodes, landed on Netflix on May 27th, while the final two episodes followed on July 1st. Now, while the first three seasons were made up of episodes with runtimes mostly under an hour, the first eight episodes in the famous show all exceed the hour-long mark, while the finale is basically the ideal length for a blockbuster movie. It was always the central creative vision of the season to have these episodes be the way that they are. Part of the reason the episodes are a bit longer is that we have a huge ensemble of characters. And by the way, fans love each and every one of them. To give them their due episode over episode, it just means the episodes need to expand to fit them. That was really what drove a lot of the length this season. The fact that we have an amazing ensemble that everybody cares about, and we want to make sure that we're delivering on each and every one of those stories," said Matt Thunell, a Netflix executive and a Stranger Things executive producer. Well, while the episodes might have been designed to fit the series' ensemble, the Duffers will now be known as the creators whose show earned the longest Their Episodes Not Movies badge in TV history. However, the lengths tend to convolute the plot by packing too much into one chapter. It's great that the show has received so much new content while giving intriguing characters like Max Mayfield, Robin Buckley, and newcomer Eddie Munson their due alongside the original cast, but it's more difficult for casual viewers to binge watch. Rather than the traditional bite-sized chapters under an hour, subscribers must sit down for several mini-movies or risk falling behind those capable of rushing through the episodes. Their timing for this experiment is ideal. By next year, it may be impossible. Stranger Things 5, the series' final season, does not yet have a production timetable or a premiere date, but it will exist within a very different Netflix landscape. Right after we found out that Stranger Things Episode 7 ending wasn't the end, the Duffer Brothers explained what was actually going on. Episode 7 is as big as any season finale we have ever had, so it made sense to everyone involved to split the season there. Episode 7 really serves as the end of the second act, and we feel that our final act had enough meat on the bone to make up Volume 2. As we began turning over episodes, everyone began to feel the season was too big to be released in one batch. At nearly 13 hours, it is really more two seasons than one. We discussed various release options with Ted Sarandos, and early on he proposed a two-volume split, which would allow us to break up the season while also staying true to Netflix's binge model. So if there was anything wrong for you in this scenario, ask Ted, Netflix's CEO, to explain himself because it seems that the Duffers took the responsibility off from themselves. Actually, Stranger Things creators Matt and Ross Duffer give their reasoning for why the fourth season's episodes are longer on average compared to previous seasons. If you look at one of the episodes, like you couldn't cut it out 15 minutes early, Reel 1 is Build Up Dread, Reel 2 is Action, Chaos, and then Reel 3 is our traditional coda, come down after all of that. You didn't really want to break it after just the buildup. It wouldn't feel like a satisfying episode. So at a certain point, we just said, well, it's just a mega episode. If someone wants to pause it, they can. If the Duffer Brothers logic is applied to the seventh episode of Stranger Things Season 4, The Massacre at Hawkins Lab, cutting the episode 15 minutes early would rob fans of some major series revelations. The episode serves as the finale of Season 4's first volume, with its last 20 minutes revealing the origin of the series' newest villain, Vecna, and what happened to all the other telekinetic children at Hawkins National Laboratory. One option for Season 4 would have been to fully embrace the two-volume release, but with more episodes. By electing to spread across two episodes, the season could have had 11 one-hour episodes and a supersized season finale. This could have still allowed for six episodes in each volume, ending the first half around Joyce and Murray's Russian crash landing, the revelation of the Creel House, and the introduction of the Nina Project. But there would have been another option to expand the episode length, but only use the content presented through Episode 7, which already acts as a season finale before spilling the rest of the story into Season 5. However, the issues with these options likely stem from Netflix's unwillingness to grant Stranger Things more than nine episodes. This could be due to budgetary concerns since each Season 4 episode was granted $30 million each. More episodes mean more budgetary needs, especially with the size of the cast, ultimately explaining Netflix's support for longer runtimes. 
Now granted, Netflix also bypassed a better release method with Stranger Things Season 4 that would have had a chance to dominate the summer. Rather than split into two volumes with a five-week gap in between, requiring binge-watching considered overwhelming by many, the streamer could have elected a weekly episodic schedule which has been working well for rival streaming services. Now, we can trace this trend of swelling episode runtimes back to Game of Thrones, which kicked things off with its 7th and 8th seasons. Both seasons featured shorter episode counts but much higher runtimes. Season 8 in particular had episodes well over the hour mark. The longest was The Long Night, which clocked in at 82 minutes. These final seasons helped TV get to where it is now, where many shows live in a new space somewhere between TV and movies in terms of budget, scale, and length. Just as Game of Thrones changed things, this season of Stranger Things feel like it could do something similar. Like Game of Thrones did before, Stranger Things 4 is doing something that actually feels new. Episode 7 is 98 minutes long, longer than movies that inspired the show like A Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween. Episode 9 is 2 hours and 19 minutes long. That's right around the length of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, and less than 10 minutes shorter than the theatrical release of James Cameron's Avatar. Following the dramatic conclusion of Stranger Things Season 4, fervent fans have already taken to social media to express their desire for Season 5. Some fans have begun to speculate on the next season's storyline, insinuating that Will Byer's connection to the Upside Down will come into play, while others have used memes such as the popular Vecna Starbucks image to show their impatience while waiting for the final season. What about Season 5? Well, actually, according to the Duffer Brothers, the fifth and final season of Stranger Things will have shorter episodes than the fourth one. For the first time ever, we don't wrap things up at the end of four, so it's going to be moving. I don't know that it's going to be 100 miles an hour at the start of five, but it's going to be moving pretty fast. Characters are already going to have a goal and a drive, and I think that's going to carve out at least a couple hours and make this season feel really different. Matt Duffer said during a July 4th episode of the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast. According to the creators and showrunners of the Netflix show, we can once again expect a final episode that is as long as a feature film. The Duffers actually joke that the last episode of Season 5 will be Return of the King-ish, a nod to the Lord of the Rings film that runs for 3 hours and 21 minutes. Well, of course, don't expect it to actually be that long, but the Duffer duo said that Season 5's finale will last at least 2 hours, but it won't be longer than Season 4's finale. The Duffer brothers finally explained that they would have ideally shot both Season 4 and Season 5 back-to-back, -back, but due to the pandemic-related issues, this was unfortunately not the case. With Season 4 just completed and Season 5 yet to be written, the final season may not arrive on Netflix for another two years. But what do you think about Stranger Things Season 4? And what are your expectations for the final season? Let us know in the comments down below.